This week, I reviewed Toyota's first mass-produced battery electric vehicle, the BZ4X. And while it was impressively efficient, eking out 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour, the edgy crossover fell short in many important areas. Software, DC charging rates, and an interior featuring a sea of piano black plastic. And while it drove great and had impeccable build quality and refinement, I can't recommend it over a Model Y, Aria, EV6, Ionic 5, Mach-E, XE40 Recharge, Polestar 2. Well, I guess it's better than the numb feeling ID4, right? The good news is that Toyota knows it's not top of class, and by 2026, their EVs will start competing with the very best of the competition with an all-new dedicated battery electric platform. Toyota has just laid out the six game-changing steps that will radically change their production process. Will Toyota be able to jump to the front of the pack in just three to four years? Let's dive in. In this video, I'll be summarizing an article over at Automo News and their resident Asian automaker journalist Hans Grimel was actually given a behind the scenes tour for two days last month, September, into Toyota's plans to transform its production process in order to be competitive in the future. Akihisa Shirao, project general manager of Toyota's newly established BE factory, says we have been late in starting the progress, but we hope to leapfrog ahead of Tesla this way. And Toyota execs are calling this a transformation like in the past where body on frame vehicles shifted into unibody architecture. They're saying this next step with battery electric vehicles is such a big jump that is seen only just a couple times in the automotive history. With these advancements, Toyota expects to half production lead time and reduce equipment costs by 25% through digitalization and its new dedicated EV lines, Toyota's Productivity could double. And developing new models on this modular EV architecture will require half the investment and development resources, and vehicles will double their range with better batteries. And of the three and a half million Toyota EVs to be sold in 2030, that's their goal, anyways, over 1.7 million are going to be on this next generation battery electric platform. So let's get into step one. How are they going to leapfrog Tesla? Well, it starts with digital twin technology. This gives engineers the ability to speed the creation, testing, and verification of new line designs by creating a virtual world doppelganger. This will half mass production preparation lead times and improve the accuracy of reproducing line layouts to one millimeter precision. Engineers are using a video screen the size of a wall and interacting with 3D digital models of possible line designs that are overlaid on to the existing factory floors. The digital models are massive and they can be twisted and repositioned in any way possible. And then the engineers will put on virtual reality goggles, head into a green room with this digital landscape they just created on that video wall and try their hand at assembling mock-ups of components. In the past and currently, Toyota has to set up equipment on the floor and make it fit together in a trial and error method. Now they can do it with a 90% reduction in reworking. This reduces equipment costs by one quarter and halves the time needed to retool a new vehicle production line. These digital tools are now also automating skills that have previously been used by humans. They replicated worker movements of loading jigs into a cutting machine and replicated it with a robotic arm that can work all night and on holidays. The workers who used to hand feed the machines are retrained in these new digital planning tools. And using these measures, Toyota hopes to triple the productivity of machining at its plants. Into step two, casting, or what Toyota wants to call giga casting based off of the success of Tesla's giga casting. There are other manufacturers now using this technology such as Volvo and BYD and some of Geely as well, which owns Volvo. Toyota is using a 4,000 ton massive machine from Japanese press maker Ube Corp to create a front, middle, and rear sections of the car. The BZ4X currently has a complex system of 86 parts that are manufactured through 33 processes. But the new gigacasting press 
forms the same exact module as one piece, saving stamping time and assembly complexity. Now these massive machines are not cheap. Molten aluminum is injected into these molds at over 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and flash cooled with water to less than 500 degrees Fahrenheit in a matter of seconds. The press then opens with a bunch of steam and a robot reaches in to clutch the finished underbody module and take it out. Toyota can now produce these sections of the car as fast as 150 seconds, but the goal is to have it as fast as 100 seconds per cast. Giga casting will improve productivity by up to 20%, but Toyota is far from figuring this out on a large scale. They only currently have one Giga press, and they of course will need more by 2026. And they think they may actually need bigger giga casts if the 4,000 pound machine is not good enough. On to step three, batteries. The first next gen battery will be on lithium iron phosphate technology. These will come in 2026 to 2027, but they will be using bipolar technology, combining the athode and cathode terminals into the same current collector. The battery's range will exceed 370 miles, which is a 20% gain over the BZ4X's battery, and it will reduce costs by 40% thanks to less expensive materials. Toyota will start a demonstration line next year with these bipolar battery cells. Toyota solid state batteries will start arriving around 2027 or 2028, and will have a range of more than 620 miles, and that's probably on the WLTP cycle, and the battery should recharge in about 10 minutes. They still don't know how much it will cost. The current issue with solid state batteries is the stacking of the layers, which need to be done precisely and at high speeds. But by using Toyota's expertise in Katakuri, which is a kind of mechanical manufacturing gadgetry that doesn't even use electricity, Toyota says they can overcome the problem of synchronizing the stacking. And Toyota claims they have cracked the code of solid state battery materials. And the next big challenge is speeding up the output while maintaining quality and safety. Moving on to step four, body and paint shop. At this point, the BEV and the assembly process is still broken into three sections, even though the battery is assembled and to the middle portion. But workers now gain an easy 360 degree access to install parts and components before the modules are joined. But Toyota engineers don't really know the best way to connect these three pieces quite yet. Toyota currently uses welding robots on their steel vehicles, which shower sparks everywhere. But that's not gonna work on this new platform because there is a fire concern with the battery. Also, there are already be components installed in these three pieces, like plastic interior trims, steering wheels, tires, and other varnishes that engineers don't want damaged by the welding sparks. So they're going to be ditching welding and they're considering using bolts, adhesives, or flow drill screw fasteners. Exterior body paneling will probably be aluminum or resin. And if it's resin, Toyota now has a way of achieving high gloss paint-like finish without needing to paint the pieces. And this new technology will first be seen in the upcoming Crown Sport, I will be heading to the LA Auto Show this year, where hopefully they are revealing the Crown Sport for the North American market. And when it comes to painting, Toyota is also downsizing. In one of their Chinese plants, they have a 60% smaller volume than the current setups that we have in most other Toyota plants. And it allows 15% reduction in paint usage, 10% cost reduction, and a 17% decrease in carbon dioxide emissions. Step five, final assembly. This is all about using self-propelled assembly line and getting rid of the anchored assembly lines. The cars will roll down the factory floor using radio signal control technology, kind of like a remote controlled RC car. On the factory pillars, there are cameras and LiDAR sensors installed that keep the car on track and clear of workers. The cars inch along at 0.22 miles per hour, but that yields a plant tack time of one car per minute. And if you multiply that by the amount of minutes a day and the amount of days in a year, they could be producing over 500,000 battery electric vehicles, assuming no downtime per year. You're going to have robotic forklifts and Roomba-like automated pallets that are going to be shuttling parts and passing cars from nearby storage. And robots now will be installing things like seats that have traditionally been done by people. With no conveyor belts, Toyota will half investment. And of course, labor per vehicle will go down as well. And just by ditching conveyor belts alone, Toyota says they can save 
hundreds of millions and dollars of plant investments. Step six, transport. The radio controlled cars drive themselves out of the factory and into the parking yard. Currently, human drivers are running around the parking yard up to five miles a day and moving cars around. But now human drivers are really not needed until the final step. No doors are needed to be open so the cars can be parked closer together than ever before. This is super important because we know Japan's population is aging and there is a chronic labor shortage. There's also a new labor law taking effect next year which will restrict the work hours of these drivers. At this point, the cars are ready to be loaded onto car carriers and these brand new vehicle logistics robots will move the cars into the loading area. Humans will still drive these vehicles onto the trucks in the last stage, but the logistics robots eliminate all that walking time by bringing the cars straight to the dock. This sort of technology will eventually supplant the lot's 22 human workers with just 10 robots. Takahiro Umura, chief officer of Toyota's production group, told Automotive News, We have a long history of success. This can be both a strength and a weakness. It is sometimes difficult to have a breakthrough, but we like to say that in times of a pinch, there also comes an opportunity. This is a big turning point in our competitiveness. And I will see you guys down below. Do you think these six steps will allow Toyota to leapfrog the competition and place them right at the front of the pack with Tesla and others? We won't see this technology in its fullness until 2026 with the very first Lexus model on this new battery electric platform with well over 500 miles of range. And I wanted to give you guys a snapshot of what's going on with Toyota's plans and expectations for EV rollout and production numbers. So we're going to go back to 2020. They only sold 3,300 BEVs worldwide, probably most of them in China, to be honest. In 2021, they saw 400 plus percent increase year over year, selling 14,000 units, but it was only just 0.17% of the total production volume of Toyota at the time. 2020 year, that's when we saw the ETNG architecture roll out with the BZ4X around the world and selling 24,000 units was an increase of 170% compared to 2021, but still just 0.27% of the total Toyota production. 2023 isn't done. So what I did is double the first half of sales. It actually could be more than this when it's all said and done. We'll see. If they end up doubling what they sold in the first half, it's an increase of 377% versus last year. And we're almost up to an entire percentage, one percentage, 0.85 here, of their total production volume. And we have a lot more uh, EVs on the market now. So we had the BZ3 added to the lineup, which is a Chinese exclusive made with BYD. There's the Lexus RZ. Make sure to watch my review on the RZ. It's very much like the BZ4X that I reviewed, except it's quieter and smoother. And it's, it's a really, really good car, but suffers the same downfalls as the BZ4X. So disappointing charging and software mainly. And uh, yeah, there's an EV Hilux. I don't know if it's available out of the market, but it has been uh, revealed for certain markets, maybe Thailand. And there's plenty of Chinese electric variants other than the BZ3. So like the CHR, the Izoa, I think also have... Uh, electric variants. And then you also have the UX 300E for certain markets too, which is a very small percentage. Looking into next year, Toyota wants to produce essentially a hundred thousand more BEVs compared to this year, which is about double the year over year production. And we'll be almost up to 2% of Toyota's total battery electric volume. We don't know what Toyota is going to do in 2024 with new battery electric products. They teased the BZ Compact SUV last year at the LA Auto Show, and that's what I'm calling the BZ3X. So maybe by the end of the year for certain markets, we'll see uh, that more fun and cool designed BZ3X compared to the... Uh, plastic black cladding everywhere, exterior and interior BZ4X. But anyways, 2025 is when things start to change massively. Look at this production volume, a 400% increase compared to the year before. They're hoping to produce 800,000 BEVs, which will be about 7% of their total production volume. We're going to see so many new BEVs come out for Toyota this year in 2025, like the BZ5X three row crossover, uh, the Lexus TZ, which is the same thing, but you know, kind of like how the Grand Highlander and the Lexus TX are essentially the same thing. So imagine that those will be built more than likely at the plant in Kentucky where they're completely changing that plant around. 
Electric IS should be out by 2025. It would be cool if we got it by the end of 2024. The main reason why this volume goes up so much is because they have that plant in North Carolina now producing batteries for not only battery electric vehicles, they'll have six assembly lines total. Two of them will, will be just for battery electric battery packs. And then the other four assembly lines will be for hybrids. I'm hearing uh, the RAV4 will go full hybrid. I'm almost 100% positive that the Camry that will be due out next year, by the end of the next year, maybe mid next year, will be uh, fully hybrid as well. So they're going to need tons of hybrid batteries. And if they ever plan on plug-in hy plug hybridizing uh, or giving the prime treatment for more models, they need to have more batteries. And that North Car Carolina battery plant should do that. And then things will continue to increase at a more steady rate after that. So in 2026, with the new battery electric platform, they will produce 1.5 million BEVs, which will equate to about 14% of Toyota's total vehicle volume. We don't know much about this Lexus flagship BEV other than it should have at least 500 miles of EV range. It'll be uh, using all the technology we talked about today in the first six steps. And how I see it, it should be a replacement for the Lexus LS as uh, the new flagship. So rest in peace LS and uh, it'll be interesting. Maybe they call it an LS, maybe called LS 600E or something. Now 2027, 28, 29, we don't have official numbers, but we do know Toyota wants to sell three and a half million BEVs. And so that's essentially, if you average it out, about a half million per year increase in volume. And who knows what kind of vehicles we'll see laid out here because uh, the flagship will debut for Lexus in 2026, but then it will start not only be seen in, in more Lexus products, but Toyota products as well. And they'll be able to scale it up to other models very, very quickly. We have to keep in mind that Lexus wants to be fully battery electric in North America, China, and Europe by 2030. And they want to sell a 1 million, I can probably write this, 1 million BEV Lexus. Uh, in 2030. So maybe 700,000 will be uh, Toyota models by 2030 on the new platform. You'll still have half of the, the battery electric vehicles still on the archaic ETNGA platform. So what can Toyota do from now in 2023 to 2030 to improve that ETNGA platform? Well, if we look at one of their largest suppliers, Aishin, which is teaming up with Denso and Toyota to create Blue Nexus, which is a major supplier of their battery electric vehicle parts, e-axles per se, they are claiming they'll be number one in the world with their third generation electric motors with space efficiency and power efficiency in that space. This slide probably breaks it down the best. In 2025, we'll have a second generation lineup of e-axles that will go into the BZ5X and a bunch of other EVs starting production that year. They're really increasing power density here as well as reducing overall volume. So if we look at this slide here, the current E-axles will be shrunken down into these tiny little things, which is going to shore up a lot of room. Space efficiency in the cabin will increase, but you're also going to have much better energy efficiency with these smaller axles with better power output all at the same time. We still might be waiting two more years until we see a big boost in efficiency and layouts with the ETNGA platform. With the ETNGA, like I said, it's not great right now. It's serviceable just barely and software can be improved radically to help that platform out. They are uh, planning to reduce electricity consumption by 15%, like I said, in 2025 with lots of different things. We mentioned the e-axles, which will contribute 10%. But uh, aerodynamics is going to improve efficiency up to 4%. Next generation electric parking brake and regenerative brakes will improve uh, efficiency up to 2%. And then you'll have better thermal management, which contributes to a 35 percent reduction in volume and improved power consumption. Will these six transformative steps catapult Toyota to the front of the BEV pack? And will their first generation BEVs be competitive at all in the years leading up to the 2026 rollout of their next gen platform? I'll see you guys sound off down below. And if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Hit the like button. I would appreciate that. And make sure you subscribe for more Toyota and other industry auto news. Thank you guys. Have a great day.